What is up you guys? Welcome back. I hope that you're all doing well. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Carmen. I'm a professional makeup artist. And in today's video, as you have already seen in the title, I'm going to be showing you how I did my hair and also how I created this New Year's Eve party look. I know it's a bit much, it's a bit out there, it's a bit daunting with the dark bold lip, but I really do love how it turned out. So if you're interested, if you want to see how I did this look, then please keep on watching. But before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe. It would mean so, so much to me if you would decide subscribing and joining this wonderful family that we have here on this channel. Also, please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and if you find it helpful. It also helps me so, so much if you press that like button. All right, without further ado, let's dive in. I look crazy. I haven't even washed my, <laughs> my face yet. I'm here with my like pimple patches. The crazy stuff that I do for you guys. I want to do my hair before I will start doing my makeup because this type of a hairstyle needs time to set. So that's why I'm looking so rough. <laughs> also, my hair looks crazy right now because I had, you know, my bathrobe um, tie around my head. That's how I do my heatless curls. So I just had that in my in my hair overnight and this is the result. If you guys want to know more about how I style and take care of my hair, I have a full video dedicated to that. So please go watch it if you're interested. So I did get quite a few requests to, you know, show you how I did my hair in the Bejeweled Taylor Swift inspired makeup video. So that's what I'm planning to do today with the, with the makeup look that I have in mind. So I'm just going to show you how I did that. Let me preface this by saying I'm not a hairstylist, okay? <laughs> I'm much more comfortable doing my makeup, doing makeup on other people. And also, for some reason, it's much easier for me personally to do hair on other people than it is to do on myself. I feel like on myself, it just takes such a long time and my hands tire so easily. So that's like, I think a common problem. But anyway, let's, let's start with that. So again, if you want to know how I curl my hair, just go watch the, the dedicated video I did on how I style and take care of my hair. Okay, so I already put some hairspray in it. Now I'm just gonna take my hairbrush and start brushing out the curls. And I did my curls pretty tight here at the top. That's how I wanted them, especially because I have like short bangs. I really hope my hair is gonna turn out okay because I feel so much pressure right now for it to turn out okay. Anyway, look at the volume that I have now that I brushed out my curls. This is limp and sad and this is nice i'm gonna look a lot in my viewfinder i also have here a mirror on my desk so it's easier for me to do my hair i'm gonna be looking down a lot probably because i need to see what i'm doing so if you see me looking down that's fine yeah my my bangs also look crazy right now <laughs> also if my hair touches my microphone i'm sorry but there's like no way that i can do this without touching my microphone i think okay so this is how my hair looks right now it's also not freshly washed this is like my third day i do use dry shampoo in it because my hair gets super oily at the roots here so this could be like also a hairstyle and just like you know do something with this part here and then kind of leave it like this this is pretty nice too but we are going to complicate things and I want to do like a side part. Gasp. <gasps> yeah, I know side parts are not that bad. Trust me, even if TikTok says they are. This is much harder for me since I have bangs. Like, look at this, you know, the hair refuses to stay how I want it to. I think even more of a side part I'm going to do. I'm gonna try to keep this part here in the back so I'm not, you know, deafening you guys with the sounds of me touching the microphone. Okay, so once it's parted, again, I look insane. <laughs> like, what is this? Okay, um, I'm just gonna lift here my hair at the roots. I'm using this type of teasing comb and I'm just gonna start teasing my hair here. This part, I'm gonna manage it soon. Don't worry about that. But I want this part to be like full fluffed out, if that makes any sense, like really with a lot of volume here. 
You can also use a texturizing spray, but my hair, I have a lot of hair and as you can see, <laughs> And it's super heavy and that just doesn't, you know, that's not enough. That doesn't do it for me enough. Just because my hair being so heavy, it just flattens out if I don't do this. I'm going to go get my hairspray because I forgot it. I'm going to be right back. This is so big. Like, look how big this is. I'm just going to shake it and I'm going to tease my hair a bit again. And I'm going to spray a bit of hairspray. There's also like powder products that you can use at the roots so you can get a lot of volume, but I feel like that just weights the hair so much and it just makes my scalp itchy. Like there is the dry shampoo from Bumble and Bumble and that also works at giving a lot of volume, but at some point it just makes my scalp so itchy that I cannot take it anymore. So I prefer doing this. My hair is separated here. It looks crazy. Just gonna brush it like this. And I actually do want the wave here like this. So I'm gonna brush it a bit here. I want this side to be much more flat. Okay, so for the next part, this is very important. You cannot do this hairstyle without hair gel. This is the got to be from Schwarzkopf and it's very cheap, very easy to find. This is also what I use in my brows, as we all know if you've watched any of my other videos. This is the only gel that I use in my brows. Cheap, convenient, beats everything, and like it, it has this, it has so much hold power for my eyebrows. And water, did I say water yet? I don't think I did, but you know, it's preferable if you do this above the sink. You definitely do not need water in a spray bottle. I'm just gonna use it because I don't have a sink here, you know, so that's easier for me. These are also very important hair clips. I have bigger ones and smaller ones. I just have two big ones like this. I will use those and then I'm going to place these in my hair. Can you see them very well? I don't know how to hold them so you can like see them, but they're hair clips. I think these are easy to find on Amazon, AliExpress, wherever, like kind of hair supply stores. I guess they're kind of more expensive there, but wherever you want to shop, either online, Amazon, AliExpress, either, you know, in person at a hair supply store, I'm sure you can find these. I mean, they're easy to find. Maybe some bobby pins. Um, I think I will use like one or two to just put this part of the hair back, like my left side back. So for the next part, I'm just going to put like a bit of hair gel this much. And then I'm going to spritz some water here in the palm of my hand, quite a lot of it. And I will mix this and turn it kind of into a very sticky paste on my fingers. This is pretty disgusting. <laughs> And yeah, I'm just gonna go ham on my hair with it. So I don't know which side should I start with. I feel like with this one, cause it's like super out there and fluffed. Anyway, so I'm just gonna coat my hair in this. And I'm gonna take more. If you add this hair gel without the water, I find that it just leaves these very, very kind of wide streaks in the hair. It just makes everything look so bad. So you definitely want to use the hair gel with some water. Okay, so I'm just going to apply some more. And my hair is now very sticky. I'm just going to put some water in it. So I want a lot of volume here. So I'm just going to lift my hair using the comb. And then I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of mold this in the shape that I want. Like I want a lot of volume here, so I'm just gonna do that. So I'm just like trying to use my, my fingers to do this. And then I'm gonna take the first clip, this is a big one, and I'm just gonna put it here like this. And then I'm just going to take the part here of the comb and lift this part here a bit more because I want it more lifted. And I'm just going to play around with my fingers and just like do the shape that I want. Okay, 
Then I'm going to place the second one here. And it's sort of a finger wave technique. You can search tutorials for this technique here on YouTube. There are a lot of videos on it from hairstylists. But this is kind of what I'm doing and it's not perfect because again, I'm not a hairstylist. I'm just playing this by ear. And I'm just using here my finger to push this part of the hair and kind of do this wave. And then I'm using this one to hold the hair and just push it back towards this finger. I hope this makes sense. And then I'm going to start using kind of the smaller clips that I have. Just like this. So you can continue this further down however much you want it. If you're wondering, did I actually need the curls? Yes, because just for me personally, my hair is extremely thin. As I said, I have a lot of it. It's heavy. It weighs a lot and just the weight of it kind of destroys any type of hairstyle. If I curl it and if I put product in it, then my hair is going to hold so much better. So it is very important, you know, for me to curl my hair beforehand. And also because I feel like with this hairstyle, it just looks so much better. So now I'm going to take my hairbrush and just brush my hair a little bit here. I'm just gonna hold here the clip so I don't drag the hair that's here, you know, down. I don't know if you can see this, but my hands are so sticky right now. It's not a very pleasant feeling. I'm gonna take a bit more of the hair gel, just like this. Again, spritz a lot of water into the palm of my hand, and I'm gonna make again the paste. I wanna do, you know, kind of a, a big wave here or like two more because I feel like this isn't enough for me. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to take the, the comb and just do this, brush it through a bit. And then I'm going to see how I want my hair. Then I'm going to place one more clip here just to be sure, just to have it really secure. I think like this, it would look nice. So I went and searched for some clips in my drawer and I found this crocodile one that's, you know, it's very big and yeah, I just, I wanted something a bit more sturdy to like hold my hair in place. So now I'm going to switch to this side. Um, I'm gonna, again, put some hair gel on my already very sticky hands. Like, ah, it's so disgusting. Okay. Again, spread some water, make my paste here. Just gonna rub my hands together. And now I'm going to do this part. I feel like with this part, it's much easier. I don't know how I'm gonna wash my face <laughs> with all of this and not ruin my hair, but I'm gonna do my best. Again, I'm using my fingers for this. So I'm just gonna sort of push my hair like this. All right, let's try to do this again. So I'm using my comb to just push the hair forward and do a wave here. And I'm just pushing the hair clip. I'm actually gonna put one more clip here. I'm just gonna use my comb here and just drag these parts a bit more forward. Kind of do the this loop here a bit bigger. And now I'm going to take another clip and just reinforce things here because the hair is loose here. It's just going to drag the hair down. And if there is anything that I need to perfect, I'm just going to do this at the end after I finish my makeup. But for the hair to really get this shape, it needs to sit. That's why I'm doing it before I apply any makeup because, you know, I'm filming, it's going to take a while. And if you want to accelerate the process, you can just use a hair dryer and dry the hair, but it still needs to sit, you know, for a bit like this. Okay, so this is it right now for the hair. I'm going to go very quickly, wash my face and moisturize real well. And we are going to continue with the makeup. Okay, my face is thoroughly washed and moisturized. <laughs> 
And now I'm going to use the Essential Lip Mask from Jouer. I'm gonna use a Q-tip to apply it and I'm gonna massage my lips together. Next, I'm going to apply highlighter as per usual before my foundation and I'm gonna use Crystal Nebula from Lissa Eldridge. I'm just going to apply this to the highest points. Again, as for why am I right here? Oh, I just scratched my face. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> and because my skin is so sensitive, if I just scratch my skin just a tiny bit, I look like I've been mauled by a bear. Like at the beginning of the video where I did the green look, the festive green look, I looked like I had claw marks on my neck. And it was just like because, you know, my skin was a bit itchy and I was like scratching it and <laughs> it looks so bad and I only noticed it when I was editing but you know I needed an intro so I had to put that part there but every time I look at the video I'm just like dude your neck looks so scratched what are you gonna do you know so I'm also applying this on my cupid's bow and a tiny bit here in between my eyebrows on the bridge of my nose for my foundation, I'm gonna use Screen Queen from Milani and this is in the shade 200 Nude Beige. Is this available anymore? I honestly have to look online and see, but I love this foundation and it's, in my opinion, one of the best foundations out there at the drugstore. I paid a lot for it because Milani is not easily available in my country, but it was worth it. I'm just gonna dab it on my face like this. My skin has definitely calmed down and my skin is always the worst at the end of my period. My my acne just gets so red and inflamed, but then it just dulls down, you know, because of the hormones. I don't know how, but I always end up filming when my skin is at its worst and whenever my skin is looking so good, like I feel so good about my skin. I never film on those days. It's so weird. Like it never gets to me filming on the days that I feel very good about my skin because yes, those days do exist, <laughs> believe it or not. So now I'm going to take a sponge and spread this with it. Buff it in. So I just applied a bit more here on my jaw area where I need the most coverage since my acne is hormonal. And I am going to bring this a bit down. I honestly forgot how much I liked this foundation again. You know, it's good to pull out products that you actually do love, old favorites, and use them again. I really hope this is still available so you can get your hands on it. And now I need to work my way around these parts. <laughs> Let's see if I can, because I need to also apply foundation a bit underneath the hair and it's not the easiest task. Let's see if I can. For my concealer, I'm gonna combine the Huda Beauty and the Lancome Tanti Dull. I really like this combo. And I like to combine the Huda Beauty with the Lancome because this one sometimes, not every time, but sometimes I feel like it's a bit too drying on my skin. So because I have, you know, these pimples here and when I go with my acne treatment, when you know, my adapalene benzoyl peroxide right here, it's very drying to my eye area as well. So I need to be very conscious about what I'm using underneath my eyes. I'm just gonna apply the mix with the 12 brush from Refer. And I'm gonna take a sponge and blend this out. Also apply a bit of that concealer on my eyelid. All right, we are now very up close and personal and I'm going to continue with the eyes. I already did my eyebrows off camera, as you can see. I'm going to start by using the paint pot from MAC in the shade Groundwork. I'm gonna make sure I have no creases first and I'm gonna do a very light wash of this product on my eyelids. I don't want a lot, but I do want something. This is such an amazing eye primer. You know how much I love this one if you've been here before. If you've watched, you know, more than one of my videos. And I'm using the refer number 02 brush to apply it. And I'm also going to apply it on my lower lash line. Just gonna extend it here. Now I'm gonna take the refer number 01 brush and blend the edges. And as you can see, this gives a very light wash of color on my eyes. 
I can definitely build this up to like a full smoky eye, but I don't want that. Not today at least. So I applied a bit more product than I needed on my eyes on purpose because I love to use this as my contour. If you're my skin tone and a little bit darker, you can definitely use this product as your contour. And the best part of it is that it lasts so long. Definitely very good for a New Year's Eve party look for, you know, any type of party look actually. So I'm just going to take it from the back of my hand using the Refer number 17 brush. My favorite brush to contour with, you already know that. I'm just going to sculpt my cheekbones. I'm going to try to move fast because once this dries, it's not as easy to blend since it's a very long lasting product. So I'm also going to use it to contour my nose real quick. And I'm also going to use the brush and push whatever is left here as best as I can with this hairstyle. This is not as easy. I'm just going to hold the hair up like this and try to get with the brush as close as I can to my hairline. So I'm also doing this part. I have to go a bit underneath my jaw since I have a lot of acne here and I'm risking lifting the products, but I want to push this part back into space. So that's why I'm contouring here. I'm just going to take the sponge and very softly tap it over the contour. We don't want any harsh lines here unless it's on purpose. If for my Christmas perfect makeup look, I use the Cinnabar palette. Today I'm going to use Meth. I'm trying to give you guys what you want because, you know, when I did the review of the Lisa Eldridge palettes, a lot of you wanted a lot of looks with them. So... That's what I'm doing basically. So I'm going to take Illusionism here, the top coat on my finger, and I'm going to press it all over my eyelid. And I'm also going to apply it in my inner corners. I'm going to continue by using whatever black from Makeup Forever and the 317 brush from Zoeva. And I'm going to use this to do a wing, but I'm just aligning here my upper lash line until the middle of it, thickening it a bit towards the outer portion of the lash line. And I'm going to stop here because I want this to be quite precise. So I'm going to take the brush, just take the pencil on it and start doing a wing. And I'm going to use the brush to just extend the pencil that I have applied here. And since this is a cold pencil, it's very easy to clean up if you've made any mistakes. So now I'm just going to take the pencil and draw a bit here in the wing. Just for a bit more intensity. Now I'm going to use the same 317 brush and I'm going to take Nocturna on it. And I'm going to stamp it over this pencil. I'm also going to take a bit of this violet stone shade on the same brush and I'm going to use it again but kind of more at the beginning of the wing where the line starts. It's not pretty obvious on camera but you can see the shift in color like it's a very dark indigo color and then it goes darker towards the wing. Now I'm going to use the same pencil and apply it just in my inner corner. So just here and again I'm going to use some more of the violet stone shade and I'm going to use it to set the pencil here in my waterline. So now I'm going to very quickly curl my lashes, apply some mascara, I have max stack here. I'm going to do a second coat. Okay, so I'm going to clean up a bit underneath my eyes, apply some fake lashes, because again, this is a New Year's Eve party look. I need lashes, okay? <laughs> of course, just here in the outer corners, and I'm going to be right back. So I'm going to use the Illum Sheer Color Trio from Hourglass. I'm going to take the bronzer here in the palette, refer number 24 brush. I'm going to take it from the back of my hand with the brush. I'm just going to start applying this higher than I applied the contour. 
So I'm going to apply this at the base here of my hair. At least try to push this <laughs> into my hairline. I'm just gonna lift it and try to do this as best as I can. My hair feels so crunchy and it is because of the hair gel. So I'm also going to apply this on the sides of my nose and on the bridge of my nose. Now I'm gonna use the blush in the palette. I'm not gonna apply too much. I don't want this look to be, you know, overwhelming. So I feel like this is the perfect type of neutral blush. And I'm gonna use the same brush. I'm just going to flip it on the other side. And again, I'm gonna take the blush from the back of my hand. I'm gonna apply a tiny bit of blush here. I'm gonna take the sponge and just dab it here on the edges of the blush and bronzer, just to make sure it's not too much product and everything kind of has a soft transition. So now I'm going to apply powder, Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Hakuhodo J5521 brush. I think I'm gonna hit pan on this powder soon and I'm just like, that's not a lot of product in it, but it's so good that I cannot stop using it. Like it's so annoying when a product is so good and it's not that cheap. So I'm gonna apply a bit here underneath my contour and my bronzer and blush. I'm not gonna apply powder over my cheeks. I'm just gonna leave them like this. But again, I wanna remind you, if you're going to a party, if you want your products to last here in this area, you should definitely set them with powder and apply on top powder bronzer and powder blush. So for my lips, I'm just gonna take a tissue, dab it and take the excess lip mask off. So for my lips, I'm gonna use this pencil from NYX. This is in the shade Los Angeles or Los Angeles. Okay, I'm just gonna line my lips with it. And now I'm gonna use this lip palette from ABH and I'm gonna use this shade right here. It looks pretty scary, I know, but it's gonna look nice, I promise you. And I'm gonna use a lip brush to apply this. So my hair was fully dried and I took off the clips. As you can see, this is what I'm left with. So if you try this hairstyle and if you feel like it's still wet, then I highly suggest you to use a hair dryer and only after remove the clips. Okay, I'm going to add the finishing touches to the look. So I'm gonna use the Space Paste from Lemonhead LA and this is in the shade Houdini. And this is a glitter in paste form, very easy to apply. So very interesting, it's called Houdini because it disappears in some light and then it magically appears. Like it depends on how you turn your head and how the light hits it. So I think it's gonna be a very nice addition to the look. I'm just looking for my brush. So I'm using the refer number 28 brush to apply it. And honestly, I don't know how well this translates on camera, but it just makes the eyelids look wet and it's so beautiful. I love it so much. I'm just trying to turn my head so you can see it. And you can see the difference between this eyelid and the other one. So I'm also applying a bit here towards the, the end of the wing. And I'm gonna use the Linda Hallberg Infinity Glass. This is just a clear gloss. And I'm going to apply it on my lips. Okay, so this is it. The finished final look right here, hair and makeup. I think this is gonna be pretty long. So if you've stuck until now, thank you so, so much for watching. So what do you think? Do you like this look? Would you wear it? Of course, you can definitely pair it with a very like nude lip if you prefer, if you find that this is too much for you. Honestly, for me, it isn't. I mean, I love makeup. I wanna try as many looks as I can. And this is not the first time I'm wearing this type of a vampy bold lip. All right, thank you so, so much for watching, for being here. I appreciate having you here more than you will ever know. Please don't forget to subscribe and press that like button if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful. And I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Bye.